few people that really hate Seinfeld. And what's interesting about all of them is that they kind of have this resistance to negativity, cynicism, and pettiness, and of owning that they have those qualities in themselves. They, they prefer to think of themselves as a good person, and so they don't really like a show that kind of explores just that kind of, the really kind of pettiness for pettiness sake, like spite for spite's sake. Because in Seinfeld, you know, George is always doing things in a, in a way that's kind of owning this spite, um, pettiness, and wanting to win. Or, um, and, and, he's, and he's doing that because there is a cynicism that leads him because he's unattractive and bald. So, there's, so with that comes a lot of cynicism when you're not able to get... Uh, when you're not able to navigate the dating world as a man, you kind of have, you have to have that, you have to learn how to play the game. You know, you don't, can't just rely on your, your, your smile and your looks, right? And so, or, or, or you can't even rely on your sense of humor like Jerry, because Jerry, he is, he's a little more attractive than George, so he can at least have the humor as a coping mechanism and the neuroticism, and he's just a little better looking, like, you know, um, and of course, you know, everyone finds someone attractive, so it's not as though he's completely unattractive, but that's kind of, that's where his cynicism comes from, and it's nice to see that, because sometimes there's a denial of, you know, reality that that, that would make you have that kind of pettiness, but of course, you know, you're going to develop that. So anyway, I just think it's, I always think it's very interesting because I think Seinfeld really captures negativity in a way that we can laugh at it. And that's nice. Like, I don't think, I, I, the culture at large is always wanting us to bypass and bulldoze to this kind of fake positivity and, and people pleasing and, and this, just this kind of like way too nice. Like, you know when girls, you know when girls interact with each other and say they're like say they haven't seen each other for a while or say they're just meeting like girls always like pile on like 70 compliments that's how they bond and there's something kind of fake and forced about it where it's like yeah like maybe they mean it but it's also just kind of like an onslaught of people pleasing in some ways like it's like it's kind of fawning it's kind of like really over the top and Seinfeld isn't like, like they're just always insulting each other and being like, oh, come on. You know, they kind of tell each other, like they tease each other in a more negative slant. And that's kind of the, why people compare Friends to Seinfeld. Friends has more of that benevolence, that warmth, which I love. I love Friends. I love Friends and Seinfeld, which is possible. And, and so, but Seinfeld kind of just has that, that kind of, um, they, like they say, like, no hugging the end of the show um, like Seinfeld is an earth sign neurotics show like it's it's like Virgo Capricorn Taurus all the way sitting in a, you know kind of being annoyed at the at, at kind of the nuances of, of work and dating in that very earth sign way that's like um, neurotic and 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 caught up in details. So it's really Virgo. I mean, it's really. I think it's it's got a lot of that that specific kind of neuroticism, and and and, and that's what's that's what's fun about it is we have a lot of people kind of full of the kind of small talk phrases and and social niceties that Seinfeld tends to poke fun at those social niceties and bonding and strange kind of it, it has a it's observational humor about those very specific little moments in life like um and, and the specific phoniness and certain things that you feel you have to do to get along in society all of that you know and it's it's clever and I, just, I love it but i think that the people that hate it i find it interesting that they they have that tendency to just hate marinating in negativity and that's in some ways that's good but you've got to be able to own you've got to be able to realize that there's there's that negativity 
in order to even be positive. In order, that's what I call grounded optimism because it's grounded in reality and looking up. And, and I think a lot of people also, I think they hate Seinfeld in that way where it, 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 it it's like how the people judge it in the very last episode. That last episode of How Seinfeld Concludes is people kind of being annoyed at how they never change and that they're always kind of caught in these, uh, these kind of petty little quabbles, squabbles. And so I get it, like there's judgment, but that's judging the part of yourself that wants to complain that doesn't. Because Seinfeld is airing out complaints about nothing, about like waiting in line at a restaurant, about when someone's about to break up with you before you break up with them, when you wanted to break up with them. Like these like really little petty specifics that, you, that if you don't air out or complain about, then you're not gonna like Seinfeld because it's, it's kind of giving voice to that side of you and you, you gotta own that side of you because um, I notice people just have such a resistance to owning sometimes that they have negativity that it actually, it, it amplifies the negativity they get in life. And so you've, you've got to have that well-roundedness. Like for instance, um, there's sometimes some, um, a culture to an entire town where they're all very negative, for instance, about their town because they think this is such a gross, ugly place. And so they kind of have this like, oh, I hate it here. And they, they kind of have that emphasis. And then if, if, if somebody says, hey, you've got to have more pride in your town, what do you like about it? it they're like, well, I like the attitude that I'm, I almost like the attitude that I have a, re, a realistic look at my town instead of pretending it's beautiful and perfect and going along with the, some kind of marketing or propaganda about it, I know what it is. It's like, my town is a gritty, rundown town, and that's what I like about me, like that, instead of looking for a way to make that positive, just embrace that that person can be real about their negativity and cynicism with their town, right? Because there's, because like when you look at tourist campaigns, they all embrace, they all kind of have that language of, of, of be, emphasizing beauty, community, and positivity, which of course, that's what makes someone want to move there. But there are also people that value the fact that you can own your negativity. And if they saw a sign for a town that said, we're bad, but we're getting better, they would see that laugh and want to go get a picture by that sign and maybe even want to move there because the people there, the Scrooges of the world, might be more appealing than the lobotomized Pollyannas. Like that might be, like of course this is like a sense of bravado and mask and stoicism that may not be true, but underneath all of that there is a marshmallow of a person, there's a softness, but like it's also nice to see that kind of humor that owning that it's a rundown place, like if you saw a sign that said that, you would be, you would have a laugh because of the honesty, and that's what would actually make you want to go to that town, because that town reflects that part of being able to own cynicism, negativity, and kind of that, just kind of that little like um, earth sign, that, that earth sign eye roll, that earth sign neuroticism of kind of knowing what's bad, knowing what's good, complaining about it, but also we're bad but we're getting better. Like there's a, again, a grounded optimism to that. So I hope that makes sense because that's how I feel about it.